Today is Tuesday, November 5th. Good morning from the Civic Media News Desk. I'm Joanne Krulotz. Today, voters across the country will elect a new president. Voters will also be electing representatives to Congress and U.S. Senators. In our listening area, voters will be choosing between incumbent Derek Van Orden or his challenger, Rebecca Cook, for Congress, and Senator Tammy Baldwin is being challenged by Eric Hovde. Around the state, there are a number of state Senate and Assembly races with the new legislative maps. As a result, voters in Richland County will be choosing a new state senator. Senator Joan Balweg was drawn into the district and faces a challenge from Sarah Kieski. Senator Howard Markline was drawn out of the Richland County District. In the Assembly, Richland County will now be represented by one representative. Current Representative Tony Kurtz, who has represented the city of Richland Center, is being challenged by Julia Henley. Two other Assembly representatives who also covered areas of Richland County, Travis Trannell and Todd Novak, were drawn out of the district. Voters will also be electing local county positions, such as county clerk, register of deeds, and county treasurer. There is one race in Richland County, and that is for register of deeds between Michelle Brown and Deb McCoy. Also on today's ballot, voters in 121 school districts will be asked yes or no on referendum questions. Districts are seeking a total of over $4.2 billion from local taxpayers for operations and facility projects. Locally, the Ithaca School District is asking voters to approve an operational referendum in the amount of $1.3 million each year for its duration of four years. As its name implies, revenue received via an operational referendum is used to meet the cost associated with operating the district, which may include attract and retain qualified teachers, Chromebooks for one-to-one instruction, access points to provide a reliable internet connection school-wide, additional safety operations, and a school bus with the intention of returning to a biannual purchase rotation to minimize repair costs. In addition, the Baraboo School District is seeking $85.7 million. The Iowa Grant District is seeking $1.2 million. The Lafarge School District is seeking $900,000. The Wisconsin Dells District is seeking $4.5 million. And the Reedsburg District has two referendum questions totaling $30 million. With the many items on the ballot, you may wonder when results will be available. Megan Wolf is the administrator of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. With the many items on the ballot, you may wonder. Uh, here in the state of Wisconsin, you know, our process and our law is a little bit different than other states. Once the election officials start to canvass the absentee ballots, so once they start counting, tabulating votes, they have to continue. They're not able to adjourn and reconvene. Um, and so all of that has to happen in one fell swoop. And so um, the election officials, you know, will continue counting votes until all of the votes have been counted accurately and with integrity. And of course, in the public eye. With the tight margins seen in Wisconsin, there is a very real possibility that there will be a recount. The state of Wisconsin, we typically see some pretty close margins. I believe of the last six presidential elections, four of those have been within the recount margin. The recount margin is 1% or less between the top two vote getters. So that's a very, very uh, tight margin. But Wolf says the WEC is prepared for the possibility of a recount. They're making sure that all of the details are prepared for a potential recount so that our local election officials are ready to be able to staff a potential recount. They know how they do things like collect the cost of a potential recount. We know how we'll collect data from unofficial results to determine whether or not someone falls into the margin that qualifies for a recount. And so they're really looking to establish all of those fine points of how a recount would operate ahead of the election so that if we do find ourselves with a contest where there's a recount, that we're ready, we're prepared, that everybody knows exactly how it's going to proceed. Polls are open and will remain open until 8 tonight. Voters need to be in line by 8 in order to vote. 
On election day, voters in Wisconsin have to be in line by 8 p.m. in order to vote. And so if somebody shows up at, you know, 801, uh, they're not going to be able to get in line to vote. Uh, In most polling places, what they're going to do and the best practice is, is they're going to send one of their election inspectors out to mark the line at 8 o'clock. And so that shows that anybody that's in front of them was in line by eight o'clock, but anybody that would like to join the line behind them is not going to be able to because they joined after eight o'clock. But a voter that is in line by eight o'clock on election night will be able to vote. We will have election updates on WRCO 100.9 FM and election coverage on WRCE 107.7 FM, 1450 AM, WRCE.FM, or on the Civic Media app. Scott Klug is an author, businessman, as well as a former politician and television reporter. From 1991 to 1999, he was a Republican member of the United States House of Representatives from Wisconsin, representing Wisconsin's 2nd Congressional District. Klug did not run for re-election in 1989. 98, and his term expired on January 3rd, 1999. Prior to serving in Congress, Klug was a television journalist for 14 years, serving as anchor and reporter for various stations in Seattle, Washington, Madison, Wisconsin, and Washington, D.C. Scott Klug currently serves as Director of Public Affairs for Foley and Lardner, a Wisconsin-based law firm, and represents clients in Washington and various state capitals. Scott Klug joined WRCO's Phil Nee on the Morning Show to discuss the 2024 election. Phil asked him about the group he is currently affiliated with and what their thoughts are on safe and secure elections in Wisconsin. I think there's been a lot of claims around the country about election fraud, and I'm part of a bipartisan group in Wisconsin and in and all the other battleground states, essentially saying, you know, the system works pretty well. And so my sort of partners in crime are J.B. Van Hollen, who is a former Republican attorney general who's from uh, Bayfield, Mandela Barnes, who ran for Democratic Senator against Ron Johnson uh, last election cycle, and then Mike Tate, who's the former Democratic uh, chair of the state party. And I think the message we just want to deliver is that Wisconsin elections are safe and secure. Um, A lot of the safeguards people want states to have, like voter ID, have been in place in Wisconsin for a long, long time. And um, I think it's important to send the message to people that their votes count and we need everybody we can to get to the polls tomorrow. Local election clerks have faced and will face unfair accusations, according to Klug, and that makes doing the job very difficult. So difficult, many have simply quit. Well, you know, half of the election officials in the country have quit since 2020. And um, people, you know, I've, I talked to folks in, in the podcast to do about the lost political middle, folks who were, you know, Democratic in Democratic cities and the very Republican state of Idaho, where people just got frustrated. And, and uh, you know, my mother-in-law worked for a million years as an election worker in Merrill, Wisconsin, just north of Wausau. You know, and it's there's no vast conspiracy going on. But people just got tired of the accusations. I talked to the guy who's the Secretary of State in Idaho, Phil McGrath, who's a, a Republican, and I said, is it easier because you're a Republican Secretary of State in, in, a, in a Republican state? And he said, no, not really. And he said, I've got my frequent flyers. I mean, we've got folks coming to the office every other day asking questions about how that, how, you know, how the system works, how that piece of machinery works, how that software works. And he said, fine, I'm glad to be transparent. But there's, you know, think about trying to do your job when somebody's standing behind you over your shoulder and it makes people nervous. And, you know, I just think of my mother-in-law in this case who, you know, handed out ballots in the basement of a Lutheran church in central Wisconsin. And so I think this sort of sense of a grand conspiracy doesn't really hold water. Wisconsin and Pennsylvania do not allow for the counting of early ballots until after the polls close. And this fact can cause confusion as numbers fluctuate greatly in a short period of time. Klug reminds us that does not mean there is fraud. It just means large numbers of votes, many from the same geographic region, are being counted at one time. The complete interview with Scott Klug can be heard at WRCO.com. Wisconsin Secretary of State Sarah Godlewski was in Richland Center Monday afternoon, stumping for Kamala Harris in the Democratic ticket. She looks forward to a promising future and a Democratic win. 
I'm really optimistic. You know, I've been traveling the state heavily since June, over 9,000 miles. And what I get so encouraged about is the people who are first-time Democratic voters that are saying, I have voted for Republicans my entire life, but I can't vote for whether it's a convicted felon that includes being, you know, liable for sexual assault to what he's done to this country. I mean, the attack on democracy in January 6th to, you know, Foxconn and our economy here in Wisconsin. And Kamala Harris is this level of hope, whether it's the work that she has done fighting for reproductive rights to the economy here when she's talking about home ownership. All of that matters to voters. And I am really optimistic for the election tomorrow. Today is election day. Polls are open until 8 tonight. Tune in to WRCO-FM 100.9 for election updates and to WRCE 107.7 FM for election coverage. Her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, campaigned in La Crosse Monday on behalf of Vice President Kamala Harris. Walz told a group of supporters that his campaign with Harris has been for an optimistic, hopeful, unified future going forward compared to a future under former President Donald Trump. Walls encouraged young people to vote and to urge others to do so. He was joined by his spouse, Gwen Walls, and Minnesota U.S. Senator Amy Klobucker. He also made stops in Wausau and Milwaukee. Republican vice presidential candidate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, also stopped in La Crosse.